Hi everybody and welcome back to Teachers Talk Money where I help teachers master their money in order to give back to themselves. I'm so excited for today's video because this has been a long time in the making. I'm also just really excited because I love the new year. The new year is always a very exciting time for me. I think that as a teacher, I tend to look at the start of the school year as kind of my new year opportunity where everything kind of gets a fresh start and I start changing those habits. However, come December, I feel like I always end up slipping back into my previous bad habits. And so I love that as teachers, we get a chance to kind of have two new years and two fresh starts when exactly when we need them. Obviously, every day is a chance for a fresh start, but it is a lot easier when the whole world is doing it with you. Now, it's absolutely a widely accepted trope that people tend to stop sticking with their resolutions after January. And this is definitely true for a lot of people. I think it comes from the fact that we try to make a huge change or many, many different huge changes all at once. And it ends up being something that really isn't sustainable. So I want to offer you guys a bunch of different money resolutions, but instead of having you do them all at once, I want to do it in a way that is much more sustainable than making a huge change and trying to stick to it for an entire year. And that is why I created my 12 money resolutions. So every single month, I'm going to take you through one resolution that's going to help you get better with money that month. If you take these small, small, tiny, tiny steps every month and you have the entire month to do them, then by the end of 2021, you will be on top of your money. I actually started doing this series last year in January, 2020, and I stuck with it for a while and it was going really great and people really appreciated them. And then when COVID hit in March and April, the money resolutions that I had designated for those months and some of the following months, suddenly were very unapplicable when many people were losing income and teachers were faced with not knowing what the heck was going on. So I stopped doing it mid-year last year um, and I'm hoping to kind of revamp it, make it make more sense, be totally applicable to anybody in any situation, and in this way give you guys goals that are truly awesome and aligned to what is important with your values in life. So. It's January. We are going to start with our first money resolution and I'm guessing that you guys already know what it is. It is extremely simple, but that does not mean that it is easy. The first step for your 12 money resolutions, and I'm gonna give you all of January to do this, is to make a budget. This does not have to be your budget for the month of January. In fact, I encourage you to make a budget for February. So the first thing that it takes is that you need to look at the numbers and know them. You need to know what you bring in each month and what you spend and what your goals are beyond those two things. What are your debt repayment, savings, and investment goals? This budget is going to be the foundation of every financial move that you make this year. Now, let's talk about budgets for a second. I feel like I always have to give this disclaimer. I know that we have this cultural idea that budgets are inherently restrictive and I just have to say, you guys have probably heard me say it a thousand times, this is not true. Budgets are not inherently restrictive. If your budget feels restrictive to you, then you have an income issue and not a planning issue. In fact, my budget was the best lifestyle change that I ever made and is one of the greatest things that I have given myself in the name of self-care. It's not like a diet, it's not restrictive, it's for anyone that wants to have control of their money and find financial independence. So the first thing you need to do is start working on shifting those mindsets and beliefs about budgeting. That's gonna take some time, but we're starting here now. So I am gonna go over the basics of budgeting right here in this video. If you want more detail on this, you can go to the link in the description. That's my budgeting basics video. I kind of came up with my style of budgeting, which is honestly, I try to make everything as simple, straightforward, and easy as possible, um, especially things like budgeting that feel like such a huge thing to tackle. So my system is literally four steps, four steps. Here's what they are. Number one is that you need to know your income. So for us teachers, that's gonna be basically the same amount every single month. 
You can find that by looking at your bank statements or your pay stubs. I do want to make a side note for those of you with an inconsistent income, it is also possible for you to budget. <laughs> what you do is you take, you look at the last six months and see what you earned each and every month for the past six months. Then you look at what the lowest number that you earned was for any month and you budget based on that number. So any money that you make above the lowest amount that you've made in the last six months, you can allocate towards different goals. Just have a plan for that extra money every month. So I would say something like, for example, you know, 80% of that extra money you make is gonna go towards savings and then 20% can go towards whatever the heck you want. Something like that. That doesn't have to be those numbers, but just have a plan for when you make more than that small amount of money. So again, step one is know your income. That brings us to step two, which is to figure out your fixed expenses. So you have to know exactly the numbers of what you spend every month for every expense that is the same each and every month. So for example, my rent is always the same amount every month. Many of my bills are the same amount. My phone bill is the same amount. Um, any subscriptions you have and also your debt minimums need to go in your fixed expenses. The reason you do this next is because that money needs to go to those people and you already know how much it is. So it is so easy that you have all of these known numbers. So once you have one, figured out your income, two, figured out what your fixed expenses are. Number three is that you are going to estimate your variable expenses. So these are the expenses that change each and every month. For me, I spend a different amount on groceries every single month. I spend a different amount on eating out every month, on gas, um, and of course for any miscellaneous things that I buy. So I have those four variable categories. So I have to estimate the max amount that I am going to allow myself to spend on those things. I think the best way to do this at first is to just give an estimate based on what you think you spend on those categories. You can go through your bank statements and actually find some actual numbers from different months, but this is a huge task and I prefer that you just get started. So it's up to you how much detail you want to go into, into that, but either way, as long as you are starting, I am happy. <laughs> and finally, step number four is to determine your plan for your larger goals. So this would be debt repayment, this would be your savings goals, and this would be your investment goals. So you need to take whatever money you have not allocated to spend that month on fixed and variable expenses and decide what goals you want to put it towards. Obviously, once you go through this, you're going to adjust and readjust a bunch of times. Honestly, I still adjust and readjust and I've been budgeting for years now. It is a living, breathing thing. It's not gonna be perfect, especially not the first time you do it. So here's your assignment. You are going to go and you are going to make a budget for February. This will take you one day in January and not even the full day. Set a few hours this month. That is all it's going to take. Not a lot of time for a whole week, literally just a few hours, one day of this month and create your first budget. If you would like an app to start with, I recommend every dollar and then you can just restructure the categories as is easiest for you. Many people use Mint um, as a budgeting app. I personally don't like it, but a lot of people highly recommend it. You can also just start with pen and paper on your own or create your own DIY spreadsheet. Now, my personal budgeting method and my favorite way to do this and what I think is the simplest way is through my budgeting templates that I've already created for you. They're in the link in the description. I have a spreadsheet version and a really cute pen and paper version and you can get those at that link which is teacherstalkmoney.com slash budget. I really don't care what you use to make your budget. Obviously, I prefer it's my templates. However, I don't really care how you do it. What I care about mostly is that you just start because that is the biggest step you can take. Remember, it's not going to be perfect your first month. You're going to misestimate categories. You're gonna forget about certain subscriptions. You are going to not remember to put in certain bills, but that is not the point. The point is that every month you're going to get closer and closer to having a budget that you can stick to and follow, and that truly will be the greatest gift that you can give yourself. 
please comment any questions below as you are making your budget and you're confused about something type up that question in the comments below and i will answer it there thank you guys so much for joining me on this video this month make sure to check in next month for your february money resolution and check in every week for new videos on thursdays Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed this content and to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content about teacher money. Have an amazing week, everybody. Bye.